It is day two of our wild adventures in Rio de Janeiro and we are super excited. Yesterday we had a blast. We started off on a mirador overlooking the city and then we were able to go down in the same areas we were overlooking and it made for a really beautiful experience. Today, well, yesterday, Christ the Redeemer was clouded up so we couldn't go up that, which is the best view of all. We're going up there today. The sky is blue, so we'll have good visibility. Fingers crossed, we're gonna go up there and we are gonna go deep into a favela, which if you guys don't know, those are the neighborhoods that sprawl up the hill, they're stacked up, they're interesting, they're full of culture and good food. It's the heart of Rio de Janeiro, and that's where we're headed right now. All right, we are in the back, back in the car with Simple Simon. Hey, what's up? Bon dia. <laughs> bon dia, and he is teaching us all sorts of stuff about Rio de Janeiro, how to speak, what to eat, the culture, everything here. Amazing guy. We had a great time yesterday. Today, we're back in the car, and we are headed first thing up to Jesus, up to Jesus, up to the Christ <laughs> Redeemer statue. What you doing, big boy? What you doing? What you doing? All right, I don't know how many millions of people. I think he said two million people visit this site a year. Yes. And normally we get up here early, but we get a little bit of late start today on purpose. We wanted the clear skies. We wanted to make sure the clouds had a chance to burn off. But it is getting busy and hectic up here, so... But we're excited. Snow, are you excited? Yeah, yeah. This is uh, one of the seven new wonders of the world. I mean, it's a, an amazing sight. Worldwide famous place. Now there's going to be people. It's going to be crowded. But, uh, yeah, I'm excited to go see this thing. One thing about Rio is there's no shortage of walking up hills. No. It's a hilly city. So we made it all the way up to where kind of the visitor center is. And you can see, of course, they have all the trinkets. But we're about to catch an elevator up where we catch the buses to go on up. It's a bit of a zoo here. <laughs> made it to the top. Let's go. We got some stairs. No, it's okay. We'll do this. Yeah, we'll do it. Oh, that's the favela we're going to later on. That's all over the... All the way down over there. All right, guys, we made it up here to the top and you can see the sea of people that are up here. It is crazy crowded. Hopefully we can get back here in this viewpoint, get a little look at it. We're working our way back there. <laughs> Christ the Redeemer was built using reinforced concrete. It has an outer shell of over 6 million soapstone tiles. It's believed that the workers who made these tiles occasionally wrote secret notes on the back, meaning this iconic landmark is full of hidden messages. Due to the statue's mountaintop position, it gets hit by lightning quite a bit. In fact, just before the 2014 FIFA World Cup, lightning struck and broke one of the statue's thumbs. Christ the Redeemer is 30 meters high with an arm span of 28 meters wide. Each year, Christ the Redeemer is visited by nearly 2 million people. As you can see, it's crowded even today in the off season. The record number of visitors in a single day to visit the statue was Easter 2011 when 14,000 people came up here during the day. All right, so as you guys can see, it is a literal zoo up here, but we do have some amazing views of the city. And today it's definitely clear and we have some good visibility. Be nice if there wasn't quite so many people 
but tomorrow I'm going up, if you can see that big square monolith over there, that's the one above where we're camping, that's the one I'm going on top of, so I think I'm going to have another amazing view, the only difference is I'll be up there with a lot less people and we won't have the helicopters buzzing around us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we just left the melee at Christ the Redeemer statue. And it's crazy, we're but worth it. Everywhere you look around this city, they have orchids and all sorts of green plants. But in any event, we're getting down to the favela. So here we go. We are here. All right, some fresh produce right here at the front. Some giant avocados, mangoes, oranges, pears, bananas, more mangoes. Of course, Simon will be guiding us through the favela, but we will also meet up with Wark. Wark lives here in the favela and he knows all the nooks and crannies. He's an artist and he works to help better his community. He will be our co-guide while we are here in the favela. We are a few minutes early, so while we're waiting on Wark here at the start of the neighborhood, we're gonna grab a snack. The cojinas are a famous Brazilian street food and they are yummy. It looks like here we buy six at a time and we can get different flavors. Work has arrived and it sure looks like we are in for a big adventure, guys. We thought we would just be walking a few blocks up into this favela. The farther up you go into one of these, the steeper it gets and the more residential it gets. But Warwick has arranged four moto taxis to get us way up into the deepest parts of this favela. So, oh my God, I am about to get on the back of a motorcycle and ride up into the Hochina favela. If you lead me to my own device, I never have to compromise. The city is like a jungle, I gotta make it mine. Put my fears right out of sight, beat the hustle, better get it right. In a game where the strong survive Only the strong survive had about a seven minute ride up the favela snaking through the s curve steep hills crazy crazy culture we just took a crazy fun psycho nuts motor taxi tour 
from way down at the bottom, weaving through these streets up here, we have this amazing view. The name of this favela or neighborhood, kind of informal neighborhood, is Polchina. Starts with an R. We have finally learned that R's mean an H sound here in Brazil. But it's Hochina, the home to 250,000 kind and welcoming Brazilians. Now, there are some parts of this favela where we will not be allowed to film because in favela fashion, there's some stuff that goes on up here that can't be documented. <laughs> but where we just went is a pretty good representation of what this whole place is gonna look like. Pretty freaking cool. Yeah, so if you can see 220,000 people in what we've told you guys, is kind of like generational hills, homes, and you can see the buildings just scale, just stair step all the way up the mountains. And this is super steep. I mean, a lot of S curves we came up, almost felt like I was gonna fall off the motorcycle a couple times backwards yeah. just because it was my, so steep. My guy said, squeeze your legs tight. Squeeze your legs tight. <laughs> Hold on. So some of these are five, six, seven story buildings right here that just kind of scale down the mountain you can see and even if you look right through here there's construction and one going on next door and right through the way if you look right there squint your eyes you can see christ the redeemer statue which we were up there earlier today let me see if i can zoom in for you here there you go christ the redeemer right there and you can see the bay over to the right and these, this favela right here has some of the most stunning views in all of Rio de Janeiro. Capoeira is like a martial arts that is like disguised as a dance because like the slaves were not allowed to do martial arts to defend them. So back in the days, they had to, they had to, yeah. They had to sneak it. They had to sneak. They had to sneak, yeah. So it truly is kind of a martial arts it is. disguised as a dance. Exactly. All right. Oh, English. So guys, the first welcome to Favela de Rocinha and welcome to Show Atora Capoeira, okay? We are Brazilian cultural heritage. And the clap of Capoeira is one, one two, three. three. What? Now, would you like to practice a little bit of samba? Samba, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not a very good dance. Not a very good dance. Not expect that, but a nice little treat. Now we were told up here in the favela only these people with the jackets are allowed to be motor taxis, and they do pay a fee to the people who kind of run the favela. That's kind of how it works up here. All right, guys, we are going indeed to the favela. So look at all the tangled wires running through here. And you know, we've seen this in a lot of places and always wondered. And one of the reasons why there's so many is because if a wire goes bad, they don't try to chase it down. Instead, they just pull a new one. All right, so a lot of this art through here is works art. 
And then also we just passed the home of somebody who does this art, which is the bottle caps making flowers. And we've really seen these all over Brazil, sort of kind of a basic uh, little concept, but art nonetheless. And we are continuing down in this favela. Someone's moving a couch here. So another issue that one of these favelas have, especially one of this size, you guys can see how densely populated it is. I mean, just the little apartments jammed in here, no space between them on the whole entire side of the mountain. Not only the water when it rains, it comes running down here, but also just general waste removal and things like that. You okay, hon? Take your time. A lot of steep stairs through here, guys, and we mostly been coming down, but there's a little bit up through here too. And these are just incredibly steep stairs. All right, guys, this is one of the apartments up here. So as we walk into the little entrance, Looks like this is a little kitchen area. They have a sink, probably a place for a refrigerator and a stove here. Little dining area. Nice size bathroom, actually. Electric water heater. And this is a little bedroom right here. <laughs> and you can see their view right here. There's other apartments right there. <laughs> Parents, this is the parents, this is the master suite right here. So this room is about eight by 10 right here. The master bedroom, eight feet by 10 feet. So work brought us into the favela. And uh, yeah, now we gotta work our way back out of here. And you guys can see how steep that is. Favelas are often called slums or shanty towns and it's assumed they are filled with crime. But maybe they should be referred to as neighborhoods with really strong cultural ties and tight communities which just don't have government infrastructure or regulations, like no building codes, no legal land ownership. Yes, very impoverished people live here, but there seems to be much more to it. Now, favelas first appeared in Brazil in the 19th century originally built by displaced soldiers from an old war. But later, they became the home of the former slaves. And in the 1970s, Brazil had a big economic boom, and many people from the countryside moved to the cities to try to take advantage of the economic opportunity. Most of these people had no money and no home, so they moved into the favelas where they could build informal housing on unoccupied land using recycled building materials. This is when the favelas really took off in population. With the population boom came more of the building stacking, where the buildings were built on any surface possible, farther up the hills and on top of one another, resulting in the signature look of the Brazilian favela. Rio de Janeiro has 14 million people that live in the metro area, and over 1.5 million of those people live in favelas. There are over a thousand favelas in Rio. Some are still very rudimentary, while others have homes hooked to, to electricity, phones, computers, and even sewage. Hochina, where we are today, is a more advanced favela. It is also the largest favela in Rio, and it is known to be the safest. Work showed us the first school in favela, and we also passed a hospital here. Not all favelas will have this type of infrastructure, but it is becoming more common. Now we're not gonna sugarcoat it. The favelas do tend to be ran by organized crime with limited participation from the government. But Brazil has established a UPP police force that works within these favelas. The goal is to create a safer environment for residents. Now this has come with some controversy with wars breaking out between the gangs and the police. But it does feel like everyone wants to be working towards making favelas safer. 
but there are many different theories on just how to do that. There are also many charities or NGOs working within the various favelas to try to help improve the living conditions. Now in 2013, which was a while back, but it's some stats I found that were interesting. 85% of favela residents like where they live and 70% would continue to live in their communities even if their income doubled. And 94% of favela residents are happy. These numbers seem to be a testament to the strong community and culture found within each favela. Of course, we could never understand all of the ins and outs of how a favela works. But from our limited time here today, we can tell you that the people have all been kind and welcoming. With our guide, Simon, and our favela co-guide, Wark, we knew exactly where we could go and where we could not go. One, for our safety and two, to respect the people that live here. Which brings us to the reason we wanted to tour a favela. Some people frown upon tourists that come into these neighborhoods. They might think we are taking advantage of the people that live here. But part of our journey around the world is to try to shed light on the different people and cultures that we encounter. But more importantly, to show the good of each country we visit. Favelas do have a bad reputation in the world, and we just want to shine the light on the good things that are happening here, like the young men that shared their dancing culture with us, and how everyone is just going about their day. Shop owners running their business, people walking their dogs, laundry getting done, kids going to school, people grabbing lunch together, just everyday life. Favelas are not crime factories. They're people's actual homes. And we hope we showed you that today. Salute! Salute! All right, we just <laughs> took a little break and had uh, some refreshments and let Snow rest her knee. Look at that little cat. There's cats everywhere here. I love it. And uh, we're headed down to the favela even further. So we basically took us all the way up to the top. And now we're working our way back down. I'm not sure how much further we have to go. But I am told we have one more experience left, so anxious to see what it is. What is it? Call that the Eiffel Tower. Oh, the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> Little shopping district. So this is a Ferretera or a hardware store, a paint store it looks like, dentist. A uh, little cosmetic and toy store right through here. Some makeup, perfumes, a little beauty shop, hair extensions, motorcycles everywhere, a barber, a little, yeah. I'm not sure how to decide that little convenience store with some tasty looking postures and some graphic art here. This is back in the 30s and 40s when this thing was just barely getting started and into the 50s. Uh, right up here, you will see when they first started building the favela, it was all temporary structures built out of wood. They weren't allowed to have permanent housing here, but a long time ago, maybe in the 70s or 80s, we don't know exactly when, but the mayor allowed permanent structures to start to be built. This is them tearing down the wooden structures, starting to build roads and build the permanent structures. This is an old bus line that used to run through here. There's so much cool history on this wall. We just walked through this intersection that was really cool. And they used to have back in the 30s or 40s, a long time ago, they used to have car races right here. But these little cars that they called Barachit. Genius. Barachinas. Little cockroaches because of their shape. <laughs> so much history on this wall. This is like before anything happened, that is the origin, it was a, it was a farm. So, Hosinga. Hosinga means Hosinia little farm. Hosinga means little farm. That is the name of this neighborhood, Hosinga. And this was the beginning, back when it was just a farm. So much cool history. Incredible. Oh, no way. This is incredible. <laughs> wow. Super. Wow. So we just got into Work's storage room where he has so much cool stuff right here. I love this little people, the little round heads. The little round heads. And when you're walking through this favela, you can spot his, his art. We can definitely spot it now. Oh, wow. 
That's amazing. And I think work is his his work is international, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's in Europe. He's represented by a French gallery, and he did expositions in Germany, all over the place. Yeah. So pretty famous guy that showed you around. Famous guy, the real deal. Look at this beautiful artwork. Wow, this is incredible. So cool. Good news everyone, we made it out of the favela. Snow's worn out from doing all the stairs and I totally understand it's been a long day. And we walked all the way back down that steep hill. You can see the motor taxis lined up here waiting to bring people up. And that is the main mode of transportation to get up to the top. We are almost back to the campground where we would be saying farewell to our new friend Simon, but we got one last stop. He said this is a restaurant we needed to eat at yeah. for some baby it's chickens. Yeah, baby chicken. <laughs> <laughs> chicken. <laughs> no, he said this is a place we need to try, so we're going to give it a try, guys. All right, lunch is done. We are at the gate to the campsite. We are saying farewell. I'm farewell. All geared up but, here. <laughs> but I got to tell you guys, <laughs> we're going to put some information down in the description of the video. If you're coming to Rio, this is your tour guide right here. Simple Simon the Pyman. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Simon. Friends, yeah, friends forever now. <laughs> we just got dropped off back at the campsite by Simon. And I told you in the last video, not this video, but we were going to take y'all all around Rio and show you the highlights and show you some of real Rio. And I would like to think that today we showed you some real, real, real Rio de Janeiro. I hope you guys enjoyed it. That was real colorful, but I also want to let you guys know if you look right up there above us, that's where I'm going tomorrow. It is a huge epic hike with amazing views through a jungle and we already know it's filled with wildlife. Woo Can't wait to see you guys on the next one. Cheers. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you guys know when we put out new videos. And don't forget, you can always follow us over on Instagram to see what's going on in between videos. Cheers guys.